In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to layer your Tate House basses like a pro, and we're gonna turn this bass. into this. For those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Vlad and I create superstar music producers. If you're interested in music coaching and you want to work on your production, mixing, sound design skills, all the links are down below. Feel free to book a call with me or send me a message on Instagram. And without further talking, let's get straight into the video. So before we start with the sound design and with uh, all things like that, I'm going to teach you one simple concept, the simple formula that you can use to uh, layer your bass lines. And I call this formula the block system formula, or the block system blueprint, basically. So uh, let's take a look at the presentation that I prepared for this um, video. So a bit of theory before we start. So this is how the baseline looks and it's just one layer and sometimes it can sound good but quite often when you have one base layer it's sort of boring it's not really interesting all right so what we can do we can do like this so this is just like one layer and as I said it's boring and we can take your baselines to the next level by using the same modes but adding multiple layers. So you can see the different colors are different bases, different layers. So I would say one, two, three, four. So we turned one base into four bases, four layers, four interesting layers that uh, each have like a specific mode, right? So for example, this is the block system formula. So the first note that I'm using here is going to be the head bass. I'm going to show you this in project. Then the second one is sort of like FX uh, Atmos layer. The third one is sort of like Reese white bass. And the fourth one is going to be the 808 bass. And the length of this loop is two bars. And uh, the overall length of the whole thing is going to be four bars. So this is variation one, as you can see. So basically, again, we are using the same modes. Uh, but different base, different character. And it makes it like super, super easy to, to do and follow this concept, right? The second variation is a bit different. So the beginning is the same, but here we are using uh, another base, again, for pretty much the same modes. Uh, so it's in this case, like FM base, not Reese one. Uh, and then again, we are using the FX2 and FX3 base. So really, really simple. As you can see, just in your mind, break down the baseline into different layers. So you can just test that, uh, but by following my intuition, I understand like already what kind of nodes I can use and where I can add nodes. If you're gonna be doing this for the first time, uh, then you might need a bit of practice, but really like the offbeat bass is usually a good thing to layer the bass that hits together with the kick. And again, like offbeat basses, as you can see here, like the what. Uh, the 808 ones, so this one and this one usually really, really good. Okay, so let's jump into the Ableton project and we're gonna uh, take a look at everything. So this is how the um, original bass sounded before I layered it. I mean, it's okay, it's not really that bad. Not bad. And now check the second variation. And it sounds just so much better, so much fuller, so more, uh, so much more interesting and so much more professional, I would say. So check it out. so much better okay so uh, let's take a look at the baseline and at each of the layers so layer number one is going to be the FX layer that we talked about so originally uh, this node was here as you can see and what you can do you can just literally like do like this and then just put it into the track where you have the base layer so uh, this is how the um, second base sounds 
So it's sort of like mid bass, top bass kind of. And because it's like an offbeat bass, it creates that like groove here. And it also adds a lot of like ambience, a lot of space into the, um, uh, into the arrangement, into the track. So check it out. Pretty cool, right? And as you can see, we have this one each two bars, so it repeats itself. Uh, but then if you look at the rest of the of the sounds, you can see that there's a bit of change in here because as you remember, we had two variations. So this one and this one, they, they both have a bit different sound selection. Okay, let's go back into the project. That's the uh, first bass. Okay. Uh, one more thing that I like using a lot is going to be the Rees hit kind of bass, which sounds like this. Really nice, like I just love this sound. And it's really, really simple, like bass sound design. If you want to have like more sound design tutorials, just let me know in the comments, I can break down for you. But this tutorial is more about like the logic, the layering, not so much about the sound design because you can use uh, presets, which is totally fine. Uh, so, together with the kick and with the bass, sounds like this. It just creates that nice hit, like it adds more power, like puts more emphasis on the kick uh, and like with the drums. Check it out. I'm gonna make it a bit louder here. And without. Sort of boring. I mean, it's okay, but we can really take it to the next level with this hit bass. Right, so again, it's a cool thing to have some sort of bass layer that hits together on the first like kick hit, right, on the first beat, which is really, really nice. Okay, so the next one is going to be a uh, wide layer. I really like using uh, Reese basses. So again, it has same modes, but the sound itself is just so nice. And I also automated the filter cutoff here. Uh, I cannot, I think, yeah, I can show you. So the cutoff, as you can see, that was the cutoff. And we go from a pretty close and dark sound into like a bright and a lot of uh, high frequencies here. And because of that, it creates like such a nice contrast between the, uh, between the different bass layers and just adds nice, even groove to the arrangement, right? So check it out uh, with a kick. Right, so it's really, really simple. As you can see, like the logic, just so easy to follow. Okay, the next thing that I really, really like is using the 808 like classic kind of bass. You can use Tom Drum, which is also like cool. It has its own kind of sound. So the 808 here sounds like this. And it's just so nice to have it like as an offbeat bass because this one creates just like insane groove. Like, I use it really, really often. Check it out. Just like nice sort of groove here. We can maybe make the main bass just a little bit shorter, just a bit. So we can have enough space. But yeah, as you can see, uh, these notes, they were like a part, a part of the original bass, if you take a look. Yeah, so those are again the notes from the original bass, which I just copied to to the uh, second bass here. But again, it's it's the part of the original bass, and it's really really easy. So yeah, using eight to eight kind of basses is just so so cool. Like I love that. Like I really really love that. Okay, so uh, that was the first half, like the first variation of the bass here. Now let's take a look at the second one. So it's essentially almost the same besides, uh, so this sound and this sound and, and this sound. So basically we just added like, again, like three more sounds. So overall for my basses, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like eight, eight bass layers, but they don't like overlap with each other. That's, that's the most important thing to keep in mind. They each have, uh, its own space, like their own space in, in the uh, in the mix and the arrangement. Okay, so again, so this one is pretty long, and it was again the part of the original bass, and this one sounds like uh, like this. So this is uh, Diva, which is uh, the sub layer. 
and then this FM kind of metallic and together they sound like so so nice okay so let's listen with the arrangement and what's cool about this bass is that it sort of acts as a lead sound as well so this is one of the interesting things that you can do like in this genre this is sort of like tech house deep tech minimal kind of track that i make that i made uh and yeah you can really use the bass line as lead sound you can layer leads on top but yeah again we're just trying to add different flavors to your bass lines and that's really really cool okay uh now the next bass sounds like this it's like super super simple square kind of uh bass here and it's an offbeat bass and again it creates like a really really nice groove so So this is sort of like a variation of a uh, 808 bass here. And then we have the final bass, which sounds like this. This one is uh, pretty interesting, like crispy, um, crunchy kind of bass. Really nice. And most of the basses, uh, besides maybe uh, this one and the 808 one, it's all presets. So you can just find the presets that you like, then you can build the template for your basses and you can use that in every track. And really, as you can see, it makes your uh, bass lines really, really interesting. And when you listen to this one, it's just so boring compared to the uh, uh, first variation where we had layers, like just so boring. And this sounds like way more professional, way more interesting, way groovier again. Yeah, so this is how you can turn your basic bases into professional, interesting, full, uh, groovy uh, bass lines. So that was it for this tutorial. I hope that you liked it. I hope that you learned something new. And as always, thanks for watching. If you're interested in coaching, all the links are down below. And I see you in the next video.